In my first Hearthstone video I uploaded onto YouTube back in December 2020, one of the last things I said was this. That's it. Never playing this shit again. Just sick of it. Boy, do I feel like an idiot now. Back to hunt for more clues. I know you'll find them all. Yes, I've returned to Hearthstone for the five millionth bloody time. I guess I don't have as much willpower as I thought I did. I mean, I've seen the likes of Joseph Anderson and GXE. They played the Hearthstone, they disliked it, they left and just moved on never looking back. But I think I just couldn't do it because, I don't know, trading cards and TCGs have played a huge part of my life. Uh, from my childhood, when I was about 8 or 9 years old, when I used to collect Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh cards. All the way up to now, really. And even games resembling card games like Hearthstone just have just barely enough redeeming qualities to keep me hooked. The problem is, though, to me, Hearthstone is like an ex-partner. I mean, sure, they have their nice qualities here and there, but deep down inside, you just know they just want your money and you can do better. But then they come back to you after a while and saying stuff like, oh, we've I've changed, you know, I'm better than before. But deep down inside, yet again, you know, they haven't changed much. A lot of it is superficial and they want your money more than ever. But hey, I'm just a naive fool. Back to Hearthstone yet again, even though I don't really like it that much. I think it was also a case of just out of curiosity, really. I mean, there was a year and a half gap. Surely things have changed. I thought I'd return during the Sunken City expansion, just before the murder at Castle Nathria expansion was launched. And I wanted to just check out any changes and, um, yeah, see what's happened since Darkmoon Fire. So, yeah. But before I get to the changes themselves, let's talk about the stuff that's remained mostly unaltered. Aside from the modes like duels and battlegrounds, where their hero and card rosters get updated every now and then, mo a majority of the modes and their gameplay is pretty much the same as before. Tavern Brawl's the same, Arena's the same, Solo Ventures are the same. The only real worth thing worth noting about the Solo stuff is they've added the remaining chapters for the Book of Heroes for the rest of the heroes, as well as adding a Book of Mercenaries, which is the same as Book of Heroes, just featuring characters that were introduced in the Year of the Griffin expansions like Forged in the Barrens and Old Rag Valley. The shop is still, in my opinion, way too highly priced for the content that you can buy from there. And also, the same thing happens where every time you enter the shop, the transition and like moving around for the first few seconds is very stuttery and laggy. That's most likely something to do with the fact they're rendering all sorts of 3D models in the, in the shop uh, instead of using like PNG files, you know, just to save on like loading all the uh, assets. So that's probably it, really. Crafting cards, the dust economy is still pretty terrible. You get fuck all dust for disenchanting and have to, you know, spend quite a lot of dust just to craft other things. There is still an occasional glitch or bug or two. Like, for example, um, you still end up continuing to fight opponents who have clearly left the match. And instead of just kicking them out after, you know, so many turns of doing nothing, you just keep playing them. Because if you can siege, you get nothing, so you have no choice but to just carry on. There are also a couple of visual glitches, like sometimes the images of uh, like the speech bubbles and mercenaries are missing sometimes. I'll talk about mercenaries later. And there was one glitch I was able to pull off consistently and reliably during the Sunken City expansion, where if you go to the collection screen and you keep clicking on and off of each hero portrait, wherever they may, they may be in the screen, you'll eventually get um, a screen that's completely blurry. Not just like the backgrounds and stuff, I mean like the entire game's screen becomes all pixely and blurry. Even the main menus and gameplay. Probably because of a patch they released during the Nethery expansion launch. Um, I can no longer do this. I even tried multiple times to do this, but yeah, they must have just patched out, so that's cool. But yeah, just small little things like that, really. Options menu looks the same. They still don't have the sound effects and voice sliders that um, I would have liked. I don't remember there being a frame rate option. Maybe that's just my mind going blank and I can't be bothered to rewatch my other earlier terrible Hearthstone video. So yeah, just, uh, just from memory, really. The achievement system is ironically pretty pointless still. Um, it just get numbers to make uh, your main number bigger. Some of these achievements do give you experience and such, but usually that's for very specific cards and monotonous tasks. 
So yeah, uh, it would be nice to see them revamp this achievement system because at the moment it just feels like it's um, contributing to nothing really, other than maybe bragging rights on YouTube. The ranking system's also pretty much the same, I think. Even if you get uh, Bronze 5 or higher on both Standard and Wild, you only get the one from the highest rank. And there's also the daily and weekly quests. I made a mistake in my other videos saying that you only get one weekly quest a week. That's not the case and hasn't been since uh, weekly quests were a thing. Um, what happens is uh, at the beginning of the week, all the empty slots in your weekly quest section of the journal are completely refilled with new quests. So yeah, that's my mistake, I apologize. Come to think of it, there have been quite a lot of mistakes in my first video. I don't know why <laughs> some uh, 200 odd people watched it. <laughs> Gameplay wise, um, there's still little to no interactivity between players since you, can, you can't do anything during your opponent's turn and vice versa. And there's still a heavy amount of RNG. There are still matches which are completely determined by just getting lucky with the random summons and hoping that your spells target the right enemies. It's still pretty frustrating at times. One of the things even worse though is that even to this day, Hearthstone team is still releasing overpowered cards. Uh, by that I mean like for example Demon Seed, uh, a Warlock card that was so broken that it ended up getting banned in the wild format, something that very rarely happens. In fact I struggle to think of any other card that's banned in wild, probably because it's the only one. Warlock is doing pretty well because they're still getting a lot of really strong support, like Impending Catastrophe in the Nathri expansion, which can provide a ridiculous amount of card advantage just for having very weak imps on your side of the board. To me, this is just a sign of a lack of playtesting on the Hearthstone team's part. Because if they did enough playtesting, then cards like Demon Seed and Imp Cat wouldn't be as strong as they were in the first place at launch. Before uploading this video, uh, they released a humongous patch with loads of nerfs and buffs. The fact they had to do so many is just reinforcing that point really that they're not playtesting the cards enough. And finally, presentation wise, it's still very solid. Graphics are decent, there's lots of flashy effects, especially when opening the loot boxes. Smooth animations for the most part, easy navigation, audio music is solid. Uh, the artwork for the cards is fantastic. Just visually polished all around really. Or well, at least they pass the presentation aspect with flying colors. Now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about the changes and what has been improved, well, in air quotes. Let's start with the rewards pass, which I'll call the rewards track since that's what it's actually called. So yeah, when the rewards track was introduced near the end of the year of the Phoenix, it was way too grindy due to the high amount of experience needed to level up to get the rewards. See, when you get enough experience, you level up. When you level up, you get rewards that's detailed in the rewards track. This can be small portions of gold, card packs, cards from the most recent expansion, etc. So they made a few adjustments since then. The best part is they've reduced the amount of experience needed to level up, making it easier to progress through the rewards track, which means more frequent rewards. But of course, Blizzard Activision and the Hearthstone team couldn't leave well enough alone so to compensate, they've increased the number of levels in the regular rewards track from 50 to 100. Therefore, actually completing the rewards track, which means getting to the end where you unlock a special hero skin, the grind ends up feeling about the same, which is a bit disappointing. So what about the cards and collection? Well, now they've added an option where if you have two copies of a regular card, you can now upgrade to them to the gold variant with dust. Sure, you need a nice wad of dust to do it. It's just a nice option to have nonetheless. And whilst we're on the subject of variants, we've got regular and golden and now we've got diamond cards. And whilst any regular playable cards can have a gold variant, only a handful of legendary minions in each set get the diamond treatment. These diamond cards range from legendaries from recent sets like Olgra, and the Sir Finley retrain, but also they went back to some of the older sets like Scholomance Academy's Jandis Barov, and even a legacy card like Ragnaros the Fire Lord. Majority of the diamonds cannot be crafted whatsoever. They are tamed in multiple different ways, from purchasing pre-order bundles at the shop, you know, the fear of missing out and all that. They're sometimes given to you as a promotional gift, 
to promote the new expansion. A lot of them can be earned by collecting 25 legendaries in the set they're in, or by buying the tavern pass, which is still pricey for what it is in my opinion. I will be completely honest though, the diamond cards look pretty cool. I only have one, but just from that one card, you can tell they put quite a bit of effort in making these look even more awesome than gold ones do. Parts of the card art sort of stick out of the card frame, giving a protruding 3D effect. The shining, glistening blue frame designs are also cool, and the animations themselves are pretty fun. Another big change is they added a new format. We got standard, wild, casual, and now we got classic format. It's a format that only allows you to use cards from the classic set for nostalgia, you know, like sort of 2015 Hearthstone kind of thing. When it comes to the sets, the basic set is no more. It's been replaced with the core set, containing a wider range of cards of more viable, competitive additions. They even added a bunch of new legendaries for you to use right away. So yeah, overall, the core decks are better than basic. One criticism I had was the inability to buy card backs from previous seasons or events, as well as hero portraits. Now though, they kind of partially answered my call. You can now buy some of the card backs with gold, 500 for each one. Not all of them though, but a few of them, which is a step forward. You could even buy some of the hero portraits for 1800 gold now. Yet again, most of them though are still unobtainable, or they're unlocked by completing some long tedious challenge. And now finally we get to the feature presentation that is the mode that was introduced in October 2021 called Mercenaries Mode. Mercenaries, to put it in one phrase, is a turn-based strategy RPG spin-off of the main Hearthstone game. So here's how the actual strategy works. Each mercenary belongs to one of three types. Red is protector, blue for caster, and green for fighter. It works very similarly to the Pokemon main series RPGs, where one tribe is strong against another and weak against the other. So yeah, glorified rock, paper, scissors, if you will. When you first play mercenaries, Rogue Hero Valera provides a few tutorial sessions, uh, showing you how to play and all the features of the mode. When you start, at first, the main menu is pretty empty, but over time you can build new facilities for said main menu. At first, most of them are free, but then you get to a point where some of the optional facilities require gold. Some of these facilities just allow you to complete bounties, build a shop, uh, train up your mercenaries, but that requires gold, stuff like that. Each mercenary has a few stats, health, attack, an archetype. Unlike Hearthstone cards though, mercenary cards have no mana cost, so you could play them as long as you have them. Each mercenary can have up to three abilities. These range from attacking, buffing friendly mercenaries, or inflicting some sort of condition like bleed. Abilities are unlocked when mercenaries reach a certain level milestone. You can edit and customize the abilities that a mercenary has, if you have enough of them to swap between them that is. There's also equipment which you can unlock to power up abilities even further or add passive effects for your mercenaries. These are unlocked usually by yet again reaching a certain level or completing a quest. So usually mercenaries works like this. You start by choosing a bounty. You select a party of up to six of your mercenaries. Parties can be created and customized in the collection screen. Bounties are a series of branching paths with all sorts of events. These events usually come in the form of battles against enemy minions, but occasionally you'll get events such as reviving one of your dead mercenaries, or even just warping straight to the final boss of the bounty. You complete the bounty by beating the final boss, and when you do, you get rewarded a random assortment of coins. We'll talk about coins shortly. So at the beginning of each battle, you can pick the three characters in your party you want to first enter the battlefield. The rest are put in reserve and are there to replace any recently deceased mercenary you have, or had rather. Then for each mercenary out on the battlefield, you get to decide which ability they should use this turn. A lot of the time, these abilities can target enemies and allies. Some of the time, so you just click on it and it, you, it, you know, it does its thing. So yeah, each battle ends when all enemies are killed. At the end of the battle, all party members gain experience. When a character gets enough experience, they will level up, increasing their stats and or unlocking new abilities. On top of that, you also gain reward tracker experience. Not always though, but more on that later. 
However, if all of your mercenaries are dead at any point of the bounty, your run in the bounty ends and you receive a consolation prize instead, just for trying. So you know how in regular Hearthstone you have gold and dust as currencies? Well in mercenaries you have coins as currency, but they're not just generic coins, that would have been too straightforward. <laughs> instead, each mercenary has its own set of coins to collect, and you need enough of each character's coins in order to unlock them by crafting them, and you also need the coins to upgrade their abilities and equipment. For example, to craft Leroy Jenkins, a legendary mercenary, it requires 500 Leroy Jenkins coins. The higher the rarity of the mercenary, the more coins required to craft them. Another example is if you have Tyrael and you want to upgrade one of his abilities, you need X amount of Tyrael coins to upgrade the ability. Coins are obtained in numerous ways, by completing bounties, completing quests at the campfire in the middle of the main menu, by opening mercenary card packs, or by buying the coins with real money from the store. Yes, mercenaries mode has its own store. And boy, there's something in this store that just We'll get there. Anyway, the mercenary card packs and specific mercenaries can also be rewarded through most of these methods, but not as often. Most of the time you'll get coins and not mercenaries themselves. Personally, I don't really like how the story quests work in the campfire, as you'll sometimes be given a task to complete a bounty you've already completed a couple of bounties ago. Bit annoying having to backtrack on something you've already completed, really. Anyway, yes, the shop. It's smaller than the main game shop, but it's just as pricey and also filled with real-life money transactions. Speaking of transactions, there's one transaction that just baffled me. It's, it was one of the most egregious microtransactions I've ever seen. The legendary mercenary Gul'dan, which costs 13 real-life pounds, which in American is $15.65. I just, I'm, I'm just really curious as to how many people actually bought this one character. Well, it's not even a character, really. It's a PNG file of a card based off of a character. I wouldn't mind so much if this was just an aesthetic item, but no, it's actually a usable character which can give you a clear advantage compared to if you just used rare mercenaries. And game modifiers like this that could just be bought out to make your experience easier, I don't know, that just annoys me. And they've been doing this for a while. In fact, during the Sunken City, they advertised a similar transaction, Legendary Mercenary Thrall. So yeah, this isn't even the first time. Jesus. Also, when you're buying coin bundles, you just gotta make sure that the coins are enough to unlock the character you want. The coins you could buy at the store is usually enough, so... But yeah, I can definitely imagine Hearthstone pulling that sort of trick, like, buy 300 coins. Oh, sorry, you're just short, you're gonna have to buy again. So, final verdict on mercenaries. It's at least interesting, sort of a little twist on the Hearthstone formula, with a somewhat satisfying gameplay loop. The problem really is that mercenaries is played with heavy monetization, an irritating currency system reliant on good RNG to get the items and the characters you want. Fortunately, each bounty does show you which coins you get if you beat the final boss by just clicking on the chest at the top right of the screen. But the problem is, for the coins that you get, they're random. Even some of the quests you complete don't give you specific coins sometimes. The coins you get are random. A set amount of coins, sure, but which character's coins you get, that's random. The same goes for mercenary packs, the amount of coins you get is random. And the character coins are also random, you don't know which character you're going to get. Could be a character you already have and could upgrade. It could be a character you already have but don't like. Or it could be for a character you don't own yet and just have to keep stockpiling until you get enough to eventually get them. And lastly, just the combat system just doesn't feel deep or varied enough to justify, you know, the gradually repetitive gameplay. Not being strong enough to be a bounty and having to play the same weaker bounties over and over and over again against the same kind of three enemies over and over and over again. Yeah, it's pretty flawed overall. Well, if there's one really good thing I could say about Mercenaries mode is that it's a great way of farming experience to speed up your rewards track progression. Earlier I mentioned how you get rewards track experience for finishing battles, but the amount of rewards track experience you earn is close to fuck all really. In fact, there have been numerous occasions where I finish a battle in less than one minute and get no rewards track XP whatsoever. You can find out if you got rewards track experience by looking at the icon that appears below the victory or defeats text 
after finishing a battle. Not long after mercenaries launched, players realised one thing, that unlike other Hearthstone modes, mercenaries battles don't have timers during turns. So literally nothing happens until you select the abilities for all your mercenaries and then press the ready button on the right of the screen or fight depending on what phase you're in. Also, the more time you spend in battle, the more reward track XP you get at the end of the battle. So similar to regular Hearthstone matches where the more time you spend in a match, the more experience you get for your troubles. And it's the two factors of getting more experience for longer matches and the fact that the mercenaries matches don't have timers so you can wait much longer than in normal Hearthstone matches that people discovered an exploit which allows you to get a shit ton more rewards track experience than usual by simply starting a bounty's battle, leaving it for about 25 to 30 minutes, coming back and then finishing it. So yeah, here's how it works. You start any battle in any bounty, put your party out onto the battlefield, and then when it's time to select your abilities, close Hearthstone, like literally close the game. Once you've closed the game, wait for about 25 minutes, after closing the game of course, then after the 25 to 30 minutes are up, just open the game again. The game will attempt to reconnect you to the same battle you just left as if nothing happened. And then just finish the battle. It's that simple really. And to prove that this trick works, I'm going to show you two clips one after the other. This first clip is me winning the first battle of the first bounty in mercenaries mode and just being it the normal way, you know, from start to finish without taking that break in the middle. Here it is. As you can see, there is no scroll or plus XP images below the victory text. That just means I didn't get any rewards experience from this battle. And now I'm going to show you the second clip, which is the same battle at the same bounty, albeit one very minor enemy change. But this time I used this close Hearthstone, open Hearthstone trick. Here is that. As you can see, this trick gave me a significantly more XP for the rewards track compared to just finishing the battle normally like in the first clip. Even after several months of mercenaries being out, the trick still works. And the best part is there's no limit to how many times you can do this per day. So it's either that the people at Blizzard Activision or the Hearthstone team haven't noticed yet. They have noticed, but they don't know how to resolve this quote unquote issue or they have noticed but just don't really care because hey, it's only 140 to 160 experience ago, they're not going to make too much progress. So yeah, that's the main reason why I play mercenaries now really. 
just to speed up the rewards track process. So yeah, that's all I really have to say about mercenaries at the moment. So I might as well just get to the conclusion. Hearthstone is still in a pretty wonky state. I mean, I'll still continue to play the game every now and then due to its addictive nature of, you know, collecting trading cards as opposed to, you know, actually enjoying the game. However, I'm still pretty confident that I will be playing the game for absolutely free without spending a single penny. I haven't yet and I don't intend to in the future. One factor that has definitely put me off from investing any money into this game is the creator of the game, Blizzard Activision's ever-growing negative reputation. Yeah, it's definitely put me off, you know, with the numerous lawsuits and the staff walkouts and hundreds of layoffs and the allegations of sexual harassment and discrimination in the workplace from employees. Over the years, I have seen many players, especially influencers and streamers like Zeddy, Regis Kilburn, Kriparian, Trump, Raven, Kibler, Disguised Toast, and Solemn, who, the latter of which has returned to Hearthstone, the latter of which seems to be more reluctant than others to return. Yeah, these players, they've spent hundreds and even thousands of insert currency here on this one title. I can't even imagine spending any more than, what, 15, 20 dollars on this game? To me, in my eyes, it's these people who are sometimes disgustingly nicknamed whales by some. It's these people's actions of spending hundreds of thousands. To me, that's non-verbally saying to the world, I'm okay with this product. I'm okay with its free-to-play structure. I'm okay with all this monetization. I'm okay with this gameplay and lack of interactivity. I'm okay with Blizzard Activision and what they're doing. And I'm okay with how they're treating their people like shit. And it's because of this financial support to games like Hearthstone, and other games like it, the video game industry has kind of mutated into one which has introduced a plethora of heavily criticised ideas like live services and uh, this free-to-play models and timers that restricts how much time you can spend on a game at once. The convoluted in-game economies and currencies. That card game in Dragon Ball Z Kakarot? How many currencies do you need? And all sorts of bullshit that we see today. At the end of the day though, we're just deciding which direction the industry goes in with our wallets. Which is why I personally recommend investing more of your money towards games that, for me anyway, have much more effort, time and love put into them. Some examples include Slay the Spire, Inscription, Hand of Fate 2, Legacy the Duelist to some extent, Faria. Hell, I'd even support Uno over Hearthstone, and I don't even like Uno. To wrap this up, I just hope that Microsoft's acquisition of Blizzard and its intellectual properties, one of which includes World of Warcraft, so I can assume Hearthstone will also be an IP they will gain access to, will change things for the better. You know, whip the studio up to shape. I mean, Microsoft is the company that has proven to provide lots of content and value for money. Take, for example, the Xbox Game Pass, arguably the best subscription service in years. I also imagine in my head of Microsoft being less shitty company to work for. So yeah, fingers crossed. So yeah, I think I'll end it there for now anyway. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in a few years for part three. Ugh.